Hey guys, this is Jace, and today I'm here with a Path of Exile performance and quality of life settings guide. So to start off, before we even get into the game, there's a few settings we can change in the Path of Exile folder. So to get here, find your shortcut for Path of Exile, right click in an open file location, and then do that again to get into the main Path of Exile folder. Then find your Path of Exile.exe. I use 64-bit because that uses DX11, which generally gives me better performance. And you want to right click that, go into properties, and head to the compatibility tab. Once here, we want to make sure Disable Full Screen Optimizations is checked off, as well as Run Program as Administrator. This isn't major by any means, but it can potentially help us avoid certain errors or crashes. Now the endgame settings is obviously where a big chunk of the changes are going to be happening. We start off in Graphics, where you begin by either choosing Full Screen for Optimal Performance, or Windowed Full Screen, which most people use in Path of Exile to be able to easily swap to other tabs such as Pee Trade. Resolution should generally be set to the highest option available, unless you're having major performance issues and don't mind your game looking significantly more blurry. VSync is something that I'd recommend almost everybody have off, because while half your FPS of it ever drops below your monitor's refresh rate, it can also cause input lag. Moving into detail settings, these all should obviously be turned to their lowest settings for maximum performance. The biggest performance impacts will come from lowering texture filtering and anti-aliasing quality, and you can play around with these settings until you find your perfect mixture of performance and game quality. Under Advanced Settings, we start with Dynamic Resolution, which will lower the resolution of your game, making it appear significantly more blurry, in order to keep your frame rate at whatever you had your target frame rate set to. This is another setting that will greatly depend on just how bad your performance is, and how much graphics quality you're willing to sacrifice to make it better. Lastly, but arguably most important, is Engine Multithreading, which when turned on allows the game to use multiple cores of your CPU instead of just one. This gives significantly better performance, but can also cause crashes for certain users, so be aware of turning this on in hardcore. There isn't much to say about sound settings, other than make sure your item filter alert volume is high enough so you can hear when items drop over other in-game sounds. There's been a few posts saying that turning off reverb and even muting all in-game sounds can increase performance due to some strange ways PoE handles sound, but these are more speculations and anecdotal evidence and confirmed information. The UI settings is where we'll see another major chunk of our changes, starting with networking mode. There's two options for networking mode, lockstep and predictive. Without getting all technical on you, predictive essentially makes you rubber band if you're having network issues, while lockstep will make your character stutter. Lockstep severely punishes bad connection with constant stuttering, but is extremely smooth for anyone with a stable connection, whereas predictive will feel smooth to people with an inconsistent connection, with rubber banding here and there whenever it gets too bad. That concludes the performance portion of this guide, and now we have the settings that can severely improve your quality of life. Some of these settings are going to be extremely subjective, so just keep that in mind going forward. The first setting I want to mention is screen shake, which I recommend disabling. Some people might not even notice it, but personally it's extremely irritating to look at. Next we have enable quest tracking and show corner map, which should always be on. Auto center map will make hitting your map key center the map instead of closing it. When it comes to the three map slider bars, landscape transparency will make things such as mountains, boulders, and other environmental landmarks more or less transparent. I usually have this turned down all the way. Map transparency will change the transparency of the map itself, which really comes down to personal preference. And map zoom essentially just decides the size of your map. Now we get into some of the more important settings that you definitely want. Always highlight will make items always show on the ground without having to hit a key. This should be on at all times. Always show sockets is another mandatory setting. It will make the sockets of your item show at all times instead of only when you hover over them. Show full descriptions, show life and mana levels, and show flask and aura icons should also be permanently enabled. This will allow you to see everything about an item while it's on the ground, see your life and mana numbers without having to hover over them, and see flask and aura buffs in the top left corner of your screen. You then want to make sure many life bars and enemies is enabled to see a small health bar over their model while fighting, as well as advanced mod descriptions, which when holding alt over an item will show whether a stat is a suffix or prefix and what tier that stat is. Two other settings to enable are auto equip, which will instantly equip an item you pick up if you don't currently have an item in that slot, which is very nice for low level, and can find mouse to window, which will make it so you can't accidentally click off your screen if you have a second monitor. Last, but certainly not least, is attack without moving, which you can access by left clicking a skill on your ability bar. When this option is enabled, it makes your character attack while standing still, instead of running to get into range and then doing the attack. This might not seem like much, but when you're constantly spamming 100% attack speed leap slams, you'll notice a major difference in your gameplay. Thanks for watching this guide, and let me know in the comments if there's anything else you want to see next.